about this further. Henry, thank you very much for joining Hi. me. Uh, now, you're also the head of the EU's crisis response planning team in Ukraine mm -hmm. when the Russians took Crimea and Donbass, and you trained uh, NATO special forces in Russia and, and all that kind of thing. So tell us a little bit about um, what you make of the government's response so far to the refugee crisis. Well, just correct your answer. I didn't train NATO special forces in Russia. It was NATO special forces on Russian tactical doctrine, how right. they fight wars. Right, right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the first thing, um, which is an observation I'd make, is that there is an interesting uh, difference between what we're seeing now coming into Eastern Europe pri primarily, right. which is 90% women and children, right. and what we've been seeing coming across the channel, which is 90% young men. And that is also indicative of a difference between refugees mm. and economic migrants. Right. Um, so, but the other thing I'd, I'd say is that the UNHCR themselves, and I, I know this in, in 1999, I helped the, or I advised the Albanian Prime Minister in managing the 400,000 refugees that came over in two days from Kosovo. And one of the ideals is to keep people in the region because they want to go back. The people who want to go beyond the region are generally those people who have some connection somewhere else. And so in this case, Germany, Italy, it might be Poland itself, it might be France, it might be the UK, it might be anywhere else. And those people will try to go to those places because they've got friends and family there. And indeed, it's the best for them if they are able to do that. They need that emotional support. Their lives have been turned on their head, mm -hmm. as we, we all can see. And in that case, we should be doing all we can to help people. But again, another part of my career was actually helping the uh, various governments to manage and deal with people smuggling and human trafficking across southeastern Europe. And one of the facts is that a lot of people will pass themselves off as Ukrainian to get into the UK in this case. So checks are needed. But none of that absolves, in my mind, the Home Office for, for its appalling, absolutely appalling record on preparation and planning. They should have known this was coming. They should have anticipated. In fact, they were warned um, that this was coming. They clearly hadn't planned for it. And now they're struggling to play catch up. The present system of, first of all, only 16.6 .6 million Ukrainians out of 44 million have got passports. So we're immediately, you know, cancelling two thirds of the, of the, the Ukrainian po uh, population. The second thing is that they've got to apply online. Well, if you're a refugee fleeing Ukraine and you are in emotional trauma, um, then you quite possibly aren't going to have access to the Internet and be able to fill out these, these Home Office forms. The third thing is that the, the time taken to process it. Now, honestly, I do believe, and having worked this issue many times before for other countries, it is absolutely possible to fast track all of this a great deal more efficiently than the Home Office is doing, so long as you plan and prepare properly.